like Vancouver, <clears throat> I mean, everyone's life is changing or not changing, right? Depending upon mm -hmm. what's occurring. So some people it has no impact and some people it has a huge impact. So depending on how much you interact with other people, but I think what's changing is this, right? Where a lot more people are interacting online and, and zooming and chatting and, and you know, it's, it's just like the whole planet. Some hands went on and went, okay, stop. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> now yeah. everything's going to be different, and people may be wondering, you know, who the fingers are and why the fingers are there, and you know, maybe some people are getting sort of a pressure from something, but obviously something is occurring, and for humans, then now we got to talk about it and give our interpretations about what's occurring, and so that's it's. I think no matter what, it's it's great. That everybody should kind of stop and slow down you know like just just stop <laughs> you know like i mean i just just at least like the mind the mind but just just stop you know for at least a day or a week or a month and, and just watch the actual world around you and depending upon your state of nature you know, you, you're in a beautiful place. I mean, I'm in a beautiful place. Yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. I mean, I'm, I, I, went for a, I went for a jog of a day, and I went to the, the ocean. And, and basically, this is my, my view, which is, <laughs> it's like a, it's like, there's more sheep in that field, and they're not keeping their distance, those sheep. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the, uh, I'm going to send a helicopter. <laughs> My, ne my next door neighbor here is called Cl Clamatis. He's just like old guy, old Greek guy who speaks not a word of English. Ah, William, the Canis. I'm like, yeah, Kala, Kala, that's it. Basically, yeah. And uh, the Greeks just don't give a shit, do they? They're, they're all hugging each other and kissing each other and walking, <laughs> carrying on as normal and uh, just waiting for the season to begin which uh, is in July. But then I've got a friend here, Nigel, who's uh, uh, he's trying to keep the two meter distance rule and, and trying to say to people, listen, hey, stay away. So he, he's paying for his coffee, puts a card down and, and his leaves on the table and then they pay and then he goes and picks up. And uh, that kind of, he try to teach them because, you know, very quickly, if people come to, to visit here, which they will in July and August, and they don't, play by the rules, then quickly something can spread. So he's saying, just, just, just be sensible for a while and, you know, take it easy. There's no need to rush into things. So yeah, we're having that kind of conversation. It's nice. But uh, there's hardly anybody here. So, yeah, at the moment, it's, it's very chilled. I mean, I, I think for people like ourselves where... I don't know about you, but it seems like most of my life has been preparing for now. And yeah. as everything crumbles or changes, uh, it, it's an opportunity to begin something new. So yeah, uh, that's my new. Yeah. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Nice. Nice. It's nothing like a big wall and a lot of post-its. A lot of post-its and a unicorn in the corner. <laughs> with the, the the I don't know what this is. I don't know what she's doing. She's her. That's it. It's my. It's, I live in this. That's it. That is it. <laughs> that is it. Love it. With a classic, with a classic uh, <laughs> broken broken toilet, nineteen seven <laughs> toilet thing. The plumber can't. The plumber would answer the call. He just disappeared. So <laughs> we just have to deal with with the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, you learn you can actually being in here is much more comfortable than the other place, which was like two floors and the patio and everything else. This is far less effort. Yeah, and the, the, the two of us, you know, she's working, so she does her her work at night, and I do mine in the morning, and she's asleep, and I'm doing my thing. And it's great. It's perfectly organized. I don't know how to speak to her. 
I'm lying in bed and I wake up and go, I said, what time is it? She goes, it's four in the morning and she's working her stuff at four o'clock in the morning. So what time is it? It's four in the morning. Okay. And that's it. And I just want a coffee. I'm all right. All right. Bye. Fine. <laughs> You were, I mean, the one, one thing you were saying about the non-confidentiality or what you want to do in terms of, I didn't say the Well, yeah, basic, basically, I mean, I'm, I've now involved, <clears throat> let me go back to this because I've now involved certain people in this and I, I trust you, yeah, but I don't know the people you know, so, but, um, so basically, you know, I've got, hang on, where's my glasses gone? Where's my glasses? Right over there. <clears throat> so I've got here, the castle is the main simulation place. And then I've got the Gamma Whales, which is this group of guys I'm talking to, there's the eight of them. And I've got Stanley and Bronze, and that's my friends in France and Germany. I've got Lavinda and his, there you are, Captain Sweep. You with you going? That's me. And, uh, you I want there. a bigger post-it. I want I want a blue one, and I want a yeah, bigger one. one than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you with you going and Wo Wo and Rafe going. We've got Lazarus Weaver and Al Ray over there. I've got spy, so this is the armies here, and I haven't got I haven't got names for the. I've got Anna Dean, my friend, who's going to be the army against the Valkyries. And I've got a guy, a Native American guy called Yellow Sky, who's going to take on the Orc Angels. And my friend Mosca Grande is going to take on the Spy Zords. And I've got the un the very ungrateful dead are against <laughs> my friend Nimke. And then the Glog are the big army, and I don't have anyone to take them on. But they lose because the Glog basically end up, because that's the Golden Spider Tavern, that's their goal. And. Uh, these armies, the two armies are gonna, I've got all a spreadsheet as to who wins each round and then, yeah, basically got to, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to write a battle scene. It's, it's, oh, the complexity of seeing who's, who takes on what. So the eight armies against the armies then down to four armies and then down to two, then down to one, taking on can make, that. Can I make a suggestion? I mean, yeah, go on. if you have eight armies, Going I've got eight armies, eight armies that, so the Allies of Truth have got eight armies, and the armies of the Deep Dark have eight armies. So and, why, and if, and, why don't you get a chessboard, and each army is a piece, and then you can just basically play a chess and figure out how the game goes? Well, I've got a, where's the, where is it? So I've got it here. I've got my final battle spreadsheet. So I've got I've got round one, round two, round three, and final battle. So basically, you've got eight armies, and then you've got four, and then two, then then one against one. So I've worked out how That's gonna work. it all works. Okay. And the main thing is that I, I don't have leaders for <laughs> the good army that lose. So I've got to say to somebody, <laughs> do you want to be leader of an army that, that basically loses? Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so Nimke doesn't know that he's going to beat. He's going to beat the very ungrateful dead, but he's going to be he's going to be destroyed by the gloom. <laughs> and then, Yellow Sky will beat the archangels, but will be destroyed by the swarms, the 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 the, the worm. Brigade and uh, the horse bloods will beat whoever they are. Phoenix Fall will beat them. So basically, Anna Dean's going to win. She's going to get through the final game and defend. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to, I'll probably make up those army people. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all working out in my head. I just have to write the fucking thing, basically. <laughs> I'm still. I have I'm, I'm writing your scene next because uh, I've written the the first scene of 
when they get their first training in the first portal and the first, second, third portal, and then the fourth portal is your one. Uh, with, uh, and that, I haven't written that yet. But uh, no, it's great fun. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I didn't, just so you know, like the, the last conversation we had where we went into details, I did not send that to anybody yet whether through procrastination or just uh intuition um yeah uh, so now what i'll do is I'll, I'll write it and then uh, i'll send the draft to you and you can have a look and see what if if you if you act you know because what i'm going to do is they basically they've had the, the first two port first three portals the first day so what happens is they do they do a portal and they experience it then they go back to the ballroom where the rest of the team quiz them on what do you experience? What do you feel? What do you learn? All that kind of stuff. And they have to answer these. It's like a <laughs> responding to a PhD dissertation. And then they go back and rest. They go back to the next one and they do the same thing. Then they sleep. And the next one, they go the next day. So you're, you're tomorrow morning with uh, you gone and the parrot. You go, <laughs> no, hang on. No, you're with, no, you're, with uh, you're in the kitchen with you gone and 10 plus one. Right. So 10 plus one is breath man. And he'll Ooh. teach them breath, and you'll teach them the intro matrix and all your stuff. And I you've got some do... fairies with me, or didn't I have seven? Oh, you've got some pixie loons. Pixie. They're uh, they're they're the ones who clean up and sort things out and basically keep people fed. So yeah, they're in the kitchen with you, and they might interfere and annoy people because they're like the seven dwarfs. <laughs> and uh, the the kitchen woman is called Justerce, who's all named after Vasia. And she has these little spider cooks who, who like to go into salads and pretend they're raisins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's part. That's part of there. That's part, they get a bit drunk on. They just drink wine and whiskey all the time and forward to salad. So basically, uh, you're up. Yeah, you're up tomorrow morning with you gone. Who does his whole hello? I'm watching you. Kind of energy stuff. <laughs> and and you 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 teach them you teach them organization because basically when the war when the battle comes they'll have to know how to organize things. So they'll they'll do the whole simulation on the seventh day they'd run a full simulation of the battle that's gonna come and you'll be teaching them on uh right because basically what happens is in the first round four of their armies are destroyed and then the main thing is that they have to protect the tavern because that's where the gold is but the 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 the, the armies of the dark try to deflect them and, and send them in a different direction and the two main characters will have to choose what they do in a specific scenario do they split up do they work together do they what do they do so you know you're going to say well you have to choose you have to choose you cannot you have to choose in the moment you cannot just decide prior to what happens what are you going to do? You have to work out in that moment, what will you do? Will you go together? Will you separate? Will you, what do you do? Because the previous time, the main guy jumps in and tries to attack the army and leaves her. And she's attacked and destroyed and killed. So either they don't do anything or they go in together. It's, 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 it's one or the other. You can't, uh, they're only know on, in the moment. So, yeah. <laughs> So I'm listening to a lot of, uh, on Spotify, there's a whole range of things called uh, uh, battle epic anthems, like from Lord of the Rings, from Narnia, from, you know, Dark Knight, uh, amazing battle scene sounds. So I'm right, thinking, I'm listening to that going, right, okay, how do they do this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just big, yeah. I think you need. And I'm sleep. I'm, all I'm doing is I go to sleep, and I do, all I think about is <clears throat> is these battles, and I see all these visions in my dream. And I wake up going, "Where am I?" And I just go up to the computer and just start writing. Wow. Stuff. <clears throat> you know, it's it's writing me, and I'm just I'm just a I'm the other vehicle for this. Wow, it's it's so beautiful to uh, participate in the joy of your creation. You know, to the low degree that I am, it's a uh, I found it very stimulating last time, and 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 uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
I mean, I've been working on such boring stuff for so long that you know, the, the, the story and the game aspects of things are so much more interesting than the kind of mechanics like the structure. <clears throat> and I, I've been trying to figure out the structures and all these things, but deep down, the layer of symbology or the story parameters that I haven't even started yet. I mean, I play with well, <clears throat> The thing is, in, in, a, in a ballroom scene, because the main team, which is about, which could be 200 people in the ballroom, you know, you can organize a, one of your organizations in there, like, like 20 people organize this and you get together and they have fun with it. And uh, happy to do that because it's uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the Gamma Whales, the Gamma Whales, uh, which is a real group, they're organizing the InDesign simulation. And then Stanley, who's Fleming French in Toulouse, and Brond, who's the blind programmer in Germany, they, they designed the initial setup and the portals. And then, uh, yeah, so basically then they, they will meet the leaders of the clans, they will be trained how to do certain things, and then that's when you can introduce. So I'll, I'll ping you when I say, right, I need some information regarding how would you organize that and you know if there's 20 like a superhero team who does what and how do they organize themselves and they can do that in the ballroom for dinner because they, they all get drunk all the time <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it's like okay stop 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 we're gonna get serious now we can, can 20 of you please organize yourself into a superhero team and they go yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. All got our brooms. We've all got our brooms, you know, and and it's just a rabble. It's and, like getting uh, the workshop to Vikings. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. You can, I can say that. Oh, we're Vikings now. We're drinking. What's the problem? We're gonna do what? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <Not you. laughs> and the and the castle has been ensouled by Douglas Adams, who uh, takes on the soul of the castle. His, his sole responsibility is to. Uh, and uh, irritate and ir irritate them with wit, and he keeps sending them uh, like representations of the dark just to wind them up. So um, yeah, that's good fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one of the things I'm I'm looking at aiming at doing is getting 144 people in the forest mm -hmm. uh, in British Columbia in 12 teams of 12 in real life and having everyone on mushrooms in this beautiful almost forest with this beautiful moss ground and having a story where there's 12 facilitators and there's a group of 12 people and during the weekend that goes to each one of these spots and mm -hmm. has an experience with each facilitator at the end of the weekend everyone's you know the love and enlightenment and whatever the heck happens but i've been imagining this for quite a while and i think i'm going to do it this summer and uh i don't know if that ties in but it's 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 like oh, definitely and uh i think in real life well in 3d the stuff that mosha is doing in la uh would link into that so that's the conscious gathering is that, that he's trying to organize this is moses in LA, in the City of Angels. So he's doing that. And uh, Breathman and uh, Big David are, uh, King David, are on their way right now. They'd probably arrive by now in LA, and they're going to all meet in Santa Monica. Uh, they're doing a pitch to investors next week. <coughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, and I'll keep informed about that. And, and when they say, okay, where's, where, where do we seed this? They say, well, you know, talk to Elijah, and uh, I'll put you in touch with Moses. And, Who's in, uh, yeah, put, put Moses in touch with Elijah the prophet in Vancouver. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. <clears throat> I'm grabbing that as, that as rocks. And, hey, wait a second. Like, we get a prophet wars. Yeah, your bush is burning. Your bush is burning. Sorry, that's your wife. I apologize. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Do you know, I was doing a bit of studying on Elijah, and at some point he's 
he comes to the king and, you know, like all the prophets, you know, he's kind of given them the king this. But at some point, the prophet realizes he's got to start running because he's pissed off everybody. And the king's, you know, wants to kill him. So Elijah's running through the sort of hills, you know, trying to get away. And I think that's the problem with most prophets is whatever you're bringing to the people, the people don't want to hear it. Like that. At the time, later on, they go, hey, that guy no, was great. It, it, we love that guy. But at the moment, you know, when Moses is coming off the mountain, you know, they're generally having their icon worshiping. And Moses is, you know, you guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he knows all about that because he was, uh, well, he still is a very senior Jew in the, in the community in the world. Oh. Uh, and uh, the, other, the other main, the main thing was that uh, what was it? Yeah, when I was in Sweden a few years ago, I, I fell asleep on the train, and uh, this guy woke me up and said, "You can't fall asleep." And I said, "I was, I was like, I was, no idea where I was." And he, he grabbed me, took me off the, off the off the train, took me to the bus station, and I said, "What's your name?" He said, "Elijah," and he was this big black guy, and he grabbed me and dragged me all the way to the bus to stay on that bus and get off there. And a big black guy called Elijah. And uh, I've got a video of, it, of me, follow, me videoing his feet as I walked up. <laughs> no idea what I was. And he said, Just get on this and get off in the center of Stockholm. <clears throat> and then I got on some train and ended up with like an entire carriage full of vampire types. And I was sitting, at, and they're all dark and I'm in bright green. <clears throat> and uh, what a weird scenario that was. And I was laughing my head off. Uh, and then, yeah, eventually got out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, <laughs> a funny old scenario. It'll all be. Like, we'll, we'll all laugh at this in like a year or two's time. We'll go. Remember that? Oh my God! Yeah. Do I remember that? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, because yeah, my friend uh, Breathman. So Breathman believed that uh, the. Uh, Atlantis uh, was a, a spaceship and basically uh, is buried either in the middle Atlantic because that's that, what, one of the places Atlantis is potentially in the middle Atlantic is potentially the Cycladi Islands because Plato wrote about it. Uh, so, under, you know, you've got always 93 islands, but actually, if you remove the water, it's been one landmass and, and Andros is known as the rock. Um, and it's uh, a very magnetic island full of iron and there's crystals under the under the under the under the earth and it's it's the only island that's got its own water supply. So yeah, there's a lot of weird shit happens here or really weird multi-dimensional stuff. So the yeah, who knows? But uh, well, a lot's going to happen here. If if I can tell you, when I was on the Sunshine Coast at a particular time, I think a couple of years ago. And I was uh, experiencing a very deep LSD MDMA trip, and this portal opened up above me, and I saw it to this, you know, basically everything in the entire portal was sort of like every molecule was looking back at me, and kind of not quite like this thing behind me, but it was this, okay, <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> conscious, and this thing's opening, and then some people are coming. And the person who came into the field, he started having this heart shock opening. He goes, I don't know what's going on, but my heart's opening. I feel a lot. I don't know what's going on. Kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, what, are you, what are you doing with this thing here? Okay, portal opening. Gotcha. And then since then, you know, there's this pier. It's a beautiful area of BC. And it was kind of like a, I got the vibe that there's entry entry zone into the pool, coming over the ocean and into this place and I was I guess given the message that this is the place to do something so the thing I told you about for this event um, this is the place and you know I don't know about you but when you get such messages you're kind of you know in and out of is this reality or is this not reality is this true or not true but when my experience, you know, I, I experienced it as true. So, um, anyway, so I mean, that just is interesting in relationship to you and the nine portals and looking at uh, Stargate. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Stargate. I, I remember it well. Mm -hmm. And Atlantis, right? I mean, you know, the 
the idea that you can have these portals that you can cross galaxies and all you have to do is sort of configure things and another thing i was i had my time translator you know that the main app i have at the base of my bed and again i was on mushrooms in one experience and i was kind of i was like the it was vinyl and very fixed right and it's paint you know it's, it's it's just a fixed thing but on mushrooms i could move the dials and so I was moving these dials to translate it. All of a sudden, I see this massive big eye. And this eye is kind of like looking at me. And all of a sudden, then I'm, I'm, I'm imagining going, wait, I'm on my bed. This eye is already seeing a human on a bed looking at it. And it's looking at me. And I'm thinking, you know, like Star Trek or something where it's some, because it looked like a big lizard eye, you know, could be on some other planet. And they've got their own time translator. And somehow this this machine or this technology comes to me and I build it and then he, and and you know one of the ways to use it is, is mushrooms and so I don't know what I'm doing and I'm sort of dialing like the radio bells and I dial into a place and then I see this being and I'm thinking okay well maybe this isn't a good idea you know maybe, maybe we don't want them to know where we are and maybe you see me in a bed may you know start a well they they already know and they've been here for a while so i i think they're yeah. but anyways it's like wait wait they're just wait waiting for my sense is that things have to get a little bit more weird for people uh around the world when when you know more earthquakes more volcanoes more like collapse people say oh shit right this, this is this is biblical time we're in these this is very much <clears throat> you know it's real and then people start to panic and fear and they'll be looking for looking for saviors looking for and then we say listen we've, been, we've told you so for long enough you know we've been talking about this for for long enough so are you listen now and they'll be yeah, yeah, yeah whatever you say just do it whatever, whatever you say we'll just do it you know you know there's a lizard in my street yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that kind of thing, and I, I do. I mean, I I forget, I forget what I talked to, but but you know, all the films and all the media that equipment it comes from somewhere, and it's it's coming from maybe one or two of those imaginations, but that image is fed by images from somewhere, and it's coming from the future, and saying you know this is the best way to prepare your mind for what's happening, so that when you you know. There's a famous story of when the tsunami happened in, uh, who was it? The tsunami in 2000, whenever it was. But basically, there were people filming it on the beach going, you know, they were filming a tsunami coming towards them and they're thinking it was unreal going, hey, you've got a tsunami coming in. Get the fuck out of there. There's a tsunami coming at you. But they're filming it thinking it's a film. And it's like, no, it's not. It's real. So it's the same with... Uh, there's a video again of uh, of two guys in, in the beach with a shark coming up the beach, and people are streaming from the balconies going, "Get out of the water!" And they're filming it. They say, "Get out of the fucking water!" And eventually they got out, you know, just because you could see the hammerhead basically swirling around and then ate some fish, but and it kept coming at them. But they just, you know, people are so dumb. They, they they just see, they think it's a film. They don't think it's actually real. So when it becomes real in 3D, and it, it's a bit like that film with the uh, wonderful Peter Sellers when he's like trying to switch the TV off, going, "This is this this can't be happening." People were saying, "I can't believe that's coming down the street at me. This can't be real. Stop it! Stop it! What's going on?" No, it is. It's in 3D now, and it's coming at you. <laughs> so get the fuck out of there. So I, I think that uh, I, I do believe that's going to happen. And uh, people like you and I will be like, because <laughs> my friend, uh, I've got a friend, David, who, who's been on many, had many psychedelic trips and said that, you know, if you look at, uh, he said he was sitting in a room on the L LSD and he was looking at the picture and basically the demon came out of the wall and started attacking him. But he knew that he just goes, hiya, how you doing? Nice to see you. What can I do for you? What, what are you looking for? What do you want? And the demon goes, ah, uh, uh, and he goes, yeah, you don't know? Right, come back where you know, right? And it goes back into the wall. It comes back into the wall. So they're, they're exactly the same as us. They're just like wanting to know, wanting to find out. 
and they just access these portals to come into our world. And we just say, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. It's nice to be here. This is Earth. It's called Earth. What can I do you for? Coffee. Oh, you want some coffee? Let's, let's try some coffee. <laughs> you, want some, you want some vodka? Here's some vodka. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Don't like that. All right, don't, okay. But it's basically Star Wars, hilarious. People just chatting, having a laugh. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we've adapted quite reasonably well to Corona. It's like phase one, and then phase two will be harder. And then eventually, you, you know, no matter what comes in, people go, oh yeah, this is just normal. <laughs> you know, it's like, what the fuck is that? Oh, gone, no idea. So it, it, it's people have no idea what's coming. Yeah, you know, no idea. Do you know, I had I had this insight um, regarding the relationship between movies and software, and mm -hmm. this can connect into your the game where, you know, at some point, it's it's like imagine watching a movie and there's a story, the whole story leading you up to this interface, for you to understand what the software is, or that mm -hmm. you're, you're in a software, and that while you're pressing the buttons, all of a sudden a movie comes on and. You know, it's, it's just like the distinction between software and movies is going to get very blurry, right? Because of games, you know, and stories, and, and uh, I think the business probably thought the businesses are not gamifying their software good enough, and I'm thinking that games are not kind of going into the business world enough. Well, did I just lose my speaker? Well, I think I. I Stuff no.